Hi everyone, welcome back to The Process. Today, for Warner Brothers' historic box office smash Barbie, we have co-writer, director, and executive producer Greta Gerwig, and the editor who's been with her since Lady Bird, Nick Huey. I guess I'd start with like, when you first read it, did you think that the moon, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> no leading the question, yeah. Um, I thought it was amazing, obviously. I remember <laughs> we both were like, what the hell? How is this possible that you, yeah. you wrote this? It's so amazing. You and Noah both like came up with this idea completely originally. Like, I don't know how you did it. And I know it was a lot of pandemic insanity, but it was so beautiful. And then I remember just being like, will they let you make it? There's no way they'll let you make it. I, I remember you saying that. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't meaning to be uh, discouraging. It was more like, no. I can't, I really hope that we get to make this, you know? Yeah, no, no. I I remember you being like, I, are they, how do they, <laughs> does anyone know about this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's surprising right. still to me that they did it, but it, um, obviously it worked out for them. Same. Yeah. And it, it's still surprising to me that it exists. <laughs> so I guess, I feel like we were really, I mean, we've worked together three times. So it's like, I mean, it, it, we have both a, like a shorthand, but also every project is its own problem. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we were obviously in communication the whole time while we were shooting, but I mean, from your end, getting all of the footage sitting there were you, were you like oh this is what it looks like or what i mean how was yeah. that like, i wasn't with you during that right it's so and, crazy because you were on yeah. set and like sending me like we will not believe this set it's the most beautiful set the way we're lighting it everything is amazing and then when i saw the footage it was like ridiculous i was just telling matt it's like most things that you work on like i've been lucky that it's always great but this you're like sitting down with a bowl of popcorn to watch the dailies like i cannot wait to watch every single take like i am so excited by everything that's coming in and that's rare to just be like like i i would go to sleep like really excited to see the dailies in the morning you know and that's yeah. like all you can hope for and there was moments where I, like when the you know the 360 shot on the beach of ryan i think i texted we were always texting funny things but i was like this might be the greatest thing ever captured on a moving camera no. i couldn't believe what i was seeing no you know? it was i couldn't <laughs> believe I, I felt so um it's funny because i feel like everything i've ever made feels personal and but in different ways but there was something about that sequence that i felt extremely <laughs> exposed by and i was like this is in some ways my truest self mm -hmm. is like you know, a ridiculous beach battle into a dream ballet. Like that is yeah. the inside of my soul <laughs> looks yeah. like. Um, but I, I think, um, I think it's something we. I, I was actually go, going back to like the beginning. Is um, it was the most extensive work I'd ever done with like a storyboard artist too. So I actually was able to share storyboard yeah. early, and we were sort of able to talk through some of that, which I was. We, um, it's funny because I feel like storyboards are extremely helpful and also not a movie. Exactly. Exactly. It's an interesting process. I don't, had you ever worked with that many storyboards? Really? We had done it on Little Women for the ice skating sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was really helpful for that. And I remember being like, oh, this is great. And then a lot of things I've worked on, yeah, have had extensive storyboards, especially for additional photography. But this was the most I'd ever done way, way pre-production. So there was yeah. multiple versions of it and really changed a lot. And that was great because it was like you were able to get ahead of any potential things that were in the way of the story, which was amazing. Because that's right. all you're ever battling really is like, what is the story? What's the tone? And making sure that we we find that, you know, and if have the pieces to do that. That's the most important yes. thing. What was the first scene you cut? Oh God, I don't remember. Well, I remember one of the first things. <laughs> oh, you... sorry. Uh, oh, was it waking we... up? It was the first scene that we shot was just the waking up. Probably. And we were texting like, oh, do we need a side angle and stuff? I remember that. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it was just like, yeah, piecing together that opening um, was the first 
thing that right. we worked on. Yeah. That that whole thing also just shooting it because we shot the whole sort of like wake up whole sequence, but it, it almost felt like we were shooting a silent film because there was no dialogue. So for the first week, we nobody said anything, which was also strange because this has got a lot of words, this movie. Um, but we started at a very like it was just quiet. Um Yeah, and, so we were just talking about like what music to use. Yes, we like were that. talking about what music and what would capture it. Um I feel like with any movie, there's always like a moment with an actor or with a production designer or with you know anyone you're collaborating with where like something will happen where you'll say ah yes not only do they understand it they understand it maybe more in in a good way like they they they've taken the understanding i have and then added Open their, own, their thing. own thing to it yeah and i think that the first thing for me that i looked at there's like a couple things uh the uh the 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 depressed Barbie commercial. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when you sent that to me and it was like, that's exact, that's it. That's, that's right. That's, that's, that whatever is in that is the correct tone and feet. Like, that's exactly what I mean. And, but it's better than that. And actually, I think another thing that was a big sort of tonal thing that I, I felt like was a tool while we were making it, but also to kind of, for the cast and the crew and everyone to kind of feel it was Nick would make every two to three weeks, um, like a little, it was like kind of a compressed watching dailies thing, kind of like the best of. It, it, there were these just incredibly pleasurable little movies um, of just the footage and things you know, cut together or just shown. So, and what, what was really helpful about it was it, you know, I guess like two and a half, three weeks into it, I was able to sit down with the whole cast and crew and screen it for them. And then they were like, oh, well, this is what we're making. Like, it's exactly. almost like, it, and, and that was also another big thing where I felt like you were already starting to use the music of Mark and Andrew. You were already starting to work everything in so that there was a feeling that was captured that like right away I knew we were all making the same thing. Yeah, that was really useful. We should do that always because it's like always. nowadays no one sits in a theater and all watches dailies together. And we that was kind of what we did is I would and it was fun for me to be finding the tone with selects and like putting music to it and like putting in little outtakes also like in between scenes and stuff. Remember that? And so yeah. and I would like be able to say like, what did you think? Did you think that was funny? And or like somebody would say to me like the entire room was laughing at that one thing that you did. I'm no longer on tiptoes. That's okay, let me see. <gasps> Flat feet! <laughs> and so I'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm finding the tone and what's working on audiences during dailies, like just looking during at dailies. dailies. So that's super helpful. That's true, that's no. like our modern version of doing that maybe. Yeah, and I've always liked the idea of doing dailies, but I think doing I've I heard like Tarantino screens them for yeah. everyone and everyone watches it, which That's sounds great. really great. Yeah. But I think um on mo most movies everybody's exhausted, you know, it's like, yeah. but like having on like a Friday afternoon at lunch to be able to screen things for people so that they can see right. like what this is, it also informs things going forward because right it like gives you a feedback loop. It, 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 it's not like a black box recording. It's like, this is what it's feeling like. And that was extremely helpful. Um, a once a week um, special daily screening, like yeah. um, supercharged daily screening. That's what also, it was helpful for people. later when like I had um, people come in, like do when Dua Lipa shot um, and John Senna, that was late in the schedule and I was able to show them a, a few of those and just be like this is kind of the vibe and they were like oh you know it's almost it, like it, a trailer yeah totally. yeah it was like a, a way to because I think coming into a movie that's already in progress can sometimes be like I don't even I'm just here for one or two days I don't know what's going on and it was like a way to kind of absorb the whole of it which was um great Biggest overall challenges. I know the answers to a lot of these. What would you describe as the biggest overall challenge? 
finding the tone and finding making it tone. we hit it pretty early and i remember things like people like ryan on set sort of saying like whoa the tone is really strong and that was in my opinion like i, I agreed and we were finding it really early and quickly but then you know that's different than when you're actually in the director's cut and you're really getting hard on the tone and you're really making sure that it's 100 percent all a plus material and and serving the story and the tone and so all the shifts in tone in the script and in the footage uh wrangling that so it all felt like one thing was the biggest challenge that we had i think you'd agree probably like, yeah because this movie has like really serious moments and really huge comedy moments uh and blending those two things in a way that doesn't feel like um whiplash to the audience was... yeah tone story character are all like iterations of the same thing and it was also kind of I think a challenge was the the object that is Barbie doesn't have a a character or a story so that's right. all invented and then figuring out what is the what is like the the language and the pace and the way that we're communicating this so that they are even though they're imaginary they're that you care about them and, yeah. and imaginary and they're heightened and it's a comedy but also it, like that was um that took some figuring it seems so obvious now that's a problem with movies is yeah. once you get to the end of it you're like well of course it's that way but yeah. in the middle of it it just does, feels like it's not clear yeah we knew we, where we wanted to be and that was where we ended up but getting there it's like we were trying to do so many things in this movie like so many things at once and we did it and I feel very proud of that for sure same I remember I mean I feel like I'm a big believer in like saying the thing you want even if it's like whatever it, it's like it's like what I want is for people to cry at yeah. this movie and realize that they're crying and say, how am I crying at a Barbie movie? <laughs> yes. now, that's, like a, that's a really hard thing to achieve. But I was like, well, we might as well just say what we mean. I also think like one thing you always ask people when we show it to, to, to once we have a cut that we're kind of working on and showing people is you, I think a question you ask, which I think is really useful is, when were you in? Yeah. When were you like, I'm in? Because movies are sort of like dreams like that. You don't really realize when. And it's, and it, you know, as we say, it, small changes can make huge differences. It's so much time and it's so much effort. But at the end of the day, you know, it's less than two hours. So everything is um, very calibrated and one thing tipped in a direction it's it's a strange house of cards and it's um you know but it's it, it, it it's almost like where do you even start for sure yeah tell me about like some of those early conversations that you had with margo and and noah as well well margo gave sort of i mean i guess the first thing was just she i i liked i liked her so much as an actor and then i i kind of got to know her a little bit as a producer and i really thought she was great and she came to me and said oh I ha I have Barbie to develop to, you know and um and do you want to write it and I said yes and then I said I, I always had an idea that Noah would write it with me because we hadn't written together for a while and I love writing together because it's just so fun and um it's he's like my favorite person to make laugh and and he wasn't sure we should do it. <laughs> he was he was sort of like, he was like, are we doing it? Or are you talking to her about it? And I I kind of backed us into it like I often do. I was like, well, uh, you know. Um, and then oh, he actually found the text from like 20, fall of 2019 that said like, I guess we're directing this movie. Um, <laughs> read about it in Variety or something like that. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, we're 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 writing this movie. Um, uh, but I think the biggest thing was that like I I knew just I mean, having edited my movies 
the main thing was like just creating an environment where we could be left alone to write whatever we wanted because I don't outline and I don't do treatments. I, I sort of, it's not the way I work or think best. I mean, I, I probably, you know, I do hundreds of drafts, but I work at them differently in a way. I think even in an editing sense, but you can answer this. They're sort of hard to take apart because they're, they're not, um, they're not modular there it's all the whole thing's grown together so when you start to try to take apart you're like oh no actually this connects oh because it's not i don't know any other way to say it it's like an organism <laughs> yeah that's why they work so well too i feel like it's all leading to something yeah it's really built you know to stand which is great but that's actually one of the reasons like one of the questions i saw you you were meant to ask me it's like <laughs> Why, why did we, why did we work together on Lady Bird? And it was because there was a, well, I mean, there was, I just like, connected with you right away. But then I remember I was in pre-production for that. And there was, you know, you, everyone in pre-production -produ pre is always looking for cuts, yeah. you know, because movies are expensive and they're like, you got this. And there was a sequence, that, you know, it was said, well, maybe you cut this. And I wrote you and I said, what do you think? Should we cut this? And you wrote back a long, really thoughtful response. And you were like, no, because, and then you had this whole, you had this whole reason. And I was like, oh, he understands. Yes, that's right. And that's what you need out of collaborators is people to remind you like what it was you were trying to do. Because sometimes in the thick of it, you can't remember. And you're like, maybe cut it. I don't know. And you want somebody who's like, no, no, you don't want to cut it. Yeah, the, the reason for it being there in the first place. And it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that there aren't things that you should cut sometimes and that you got to look at that with open eyes. But I remember, like, it's also like what's cool about making movies or telling any kind of story is that you're sharing your idea of what it should be. And there's going to be all these different people that respond to it in their own way also. And yeah. so if you're open to the those people like connecting with it and responding in their own way and maybe that can bring it to another level too like that's one of the things that you're really great at also is is like literally giving everyone their own space to do those things and bring their own things to it like that's actually unusual like you do it really beautifully so thank you for that you got a bunch of smart people I feel like I don't know I love being able to I mean I always think about it I mean, it happens a lot in editorial because it was such a great group that it was, you know, I mean, Noah was in the editing room a lot, but it was also like it's Nick and Maya, so Gloria. Yeah. And then like, like, I love being able to turn to people and like, what do you think? What do you think is the best one? Yeah. Um, and they're totally and, honest and great about yeah, it. Yeah, and they'll just give you exactly what they think. And um, it's like a, it's like when you kind of have a trust with the, with the community that's making it in post, it feels very, it feels very good. Yeah, we had a magical team on this. It was amazing all the way throughout from beget, from pre-production through the end. It was like the best people. We got really lucky. It's amazing. What's your favorite thing about being an editor and editing? Like, what do you, what is it? Like, how did you know that editing was what you wanted to do in film? It's funny. I already had a conversation about this with somebody this morning, weirdly. It was like, I don't know why it's like, like for me, it's the, that's where the movie's made. Like when I'm on set, like it's cool to be on set and stuff, but like it feels far from the movie, weirdly. You might be able to relate to it. But to me, like once I have the pieces in front of me, I can make it whatever I want, which is great. Whereas when you're on set, it's like your hands are tied. Like you're just, you're dealing with what's on set and trying to make it exciting and interesting. And you're really good at that. But it's like, I feel like I'm not really working on the movie. It's weird for me personally, when I'm there, I'm like, okay, well, let's get this finished so that we can work on the movie. <laughs> and, yeah. Like, and yeah. so like, I have to have it in front of me, like with all, all the pieces or at least some of the pieces and start saying like, oh, we could add this line. We could take away this line. We could move this here. We should do this with the transition into this scene or lose this scene. Like then I feel like I'm actually working on it. So I think even if I was directing or writing or whatever, I'd be like, oh, well, once we're in post, then we can really make the movie, you know? I was talking to a director friend of mine who was like, that the, he was like, post is the, your reward. Right. <laughs> you, you just want to get to post. Yeah, we just want to get to post. So it's like, it's like, <laughs> like and they were saying sort of like the older I get, the more I'm like, 
let's just get to the editing room. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's sort of like writing in that way where you can just like sit down and work on the story. Yeah, you yeah. just work on the story. Yeah. yeah. I think there's always um I mean I like um sort of all all aspects of it. I I think it's I kind of like it from beginning to end and I like how each kind of moment of filmmaking has a different um requirement of you and a, and a different reward sort of and a different reward mm -hmm. but it's true that when you're the editor you are interacting with what the thing becomes hello hmm? humans and ellen mm. come into my weird house hi i'm weird barbie i am in the splits i have a funky haircut and i smell like basement oh my god i had a weird barbie yeah you did you make them weird by playing too hard it's cool what are new tools in your toolkit after working <laughs> uh i mean weirdly people have asked me like was it weird to cut a musical sequence and i it felt like so natural i don't know maybe because we've always talked about musicals and the way we cut is kind of we talk about the rhythm so much like the pacing and the rhythm and the the beat of the yeah. the scene is so important to us that it just felt totally natural the simple answer is like I definitely feel like choreographed musical sequences now, I feel even more naturally uh, ready and excited to do them. Like music, musical movies of any kind, I'm very excited by now. And I always have been, but like even more so. You in this film like definitely showed me and everyone like what's possible with something that's kind of like IP that you wouldn't expect anything from. We, you know, it's Barbie. It's like, right. but you can make anything amazing and interesting if you just have the gall to do it <laughs> and to go for it. And we just like went for it. And so I think that's like a cool thing to remember is like, it can be anything you want it to be and you should make it unique and special to you. Like anyone out there listening, like that's the big lesson is like, whatever it is, you can make it whatever you want it to be. And, and that's actually what's required of you is to make yeah. it what you want it to be and make it interesting to you. Because there was times where we were doing a sequence and we're like, no one else is going to like this because it's so crazy. But we we love it and we're cracking up, crying, laughing. Hey, Barbie. Yeah. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. Right. So then yeah. we just are like, well, I guess follow that. I mean, there's things you feel right away from it. Um, and then there's also things where, especially with comedies, where I had forgotten that some of the jokes were funny because they were they were meaningless to me. <laughs> like I, they didn't they meant nothing to me. And then you know you're sitting in an audience, everybody's laughing, and you're like, oh, right, no, this is funny. Like, uh, but it's almost like you hadn't taken that into account. Um, so it's almost like you have to enter that dialogue. I always feel like the most interesting point to me in a movie, it's like you get the movie in a place where it's like, I think I said to you, it's like, you, it's like, well, you can watch it from beginning to end and you don't want to like stab your eyes out. You're like, yeah. you're like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like it's, you know, like, you don't feel like, Ugh. and then you kind of refine it from there. And then it starts feeling kind of good, which is like, you get it to that place about before you show it to people. And then it goes through this weird transformation. So you get it to a place where it makes you feel okay. Yeah. And you feel like, all right. And you sort of falsely have a moment where you're like, maybe this is pretty good. Let's just, <laughs> let's just release it. Yeah. Yeah, like this looks <laughs> and then you start deeply understanding that the, the movie now be will, will belong to the audience so yes. it's their experience like it's almost like you transfer your consciousness i try to do that even while i'm watching dailies yeah i try to get ahead of that and do that and i think that's important to do is to always be thinking as an audience member but you also have to trust your gut so then when you put it in front of an audience and you feel good about it and you think that the audience will too and then but that's the most exciting part for me is when you're at that stage you're like okay now i actually just need like a consensus of like is that scene working that i'm a little on the fence about or yeah. is this performance like is, is it tracking the whole way and things like that where you start to get granular 
um, or even bigger arching things and saying like, does everyone else agree with me or not in these ways? And how can I utilize that? Because sometimes you still have to know that you're right, even if other people even have if different other people feelings. Yeah. So, but it's important to get an idea of like any of the blind spots, you know? That's a big I guess, way to. I guess that's what it. I mean is like, it's like, I mean, I'm obviously thinking about the audience deeply being able to be like, the fact that I'm happy with it is, you know, baseline. Right. Now, like, let's make it like the like, best it can be. Yeah. The best that, like, let's cut this diamond fi as fine as it can be. In a way, I feel like I, 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 I mean, you could tell me if you think this is right. I think, in essence, the movie we have, the movie that the movie became, you'll know that we did sort of two yeah. friends and families at the same, the same week. And the movie evolved after that. But I yeah. think at its core, actually, that is the movie that's the movie. Totally. I would agree with that. And that's that's saying a lot. Like, getting to a place where you're like, this is basically the movie is huge. But what I think sets but then you... But then you realize that the, 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 the 15% things. Percent yeah. that changes is everything. And well, that's what sets you apart from a lot of uh storytellers i would say is that you and i i feel similarly is i'm not satisfied with that i want it to be 99.9 percent. .9%. i don't know if anything's ever 100 but that's like, no I, country for old men in no country for old men is the only one that's 100 percent perfect i really want to be 99.9 .9 and it, and i will work tirelessly to get there and i feel like you feel the same way like never satisfied really even if you feel um, like you say like this pretty much is the movie but I want to get it yes. as as close to perfect as possible. Yeah, so, but it's interesting, like the sort of like core of it is like, but then after that, then there were like a million iterations of working on it, and try, you know, it it was like, it wasn't at all like I mean, it was it, it relentless required yeah. relentless amounts of efforts yeah. to post that. Um, but it is it's funny you can you can make something that essentially feels like yeah that's that's the dna of it is the same yeah and still have so much work and and there's always yeah. that painful moment where you feel like in that effort that you make it worse and right. that feels terrible <laughs> but you have to know that that's part of you the have to try it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Two steps but I think, forward, one step back. I sometimes. actually think that that's like an important thing. I think that's true of, I think writing and editing are such similar things in a way. And yeah. I think that that's something to remember, like or if anyone who's making movies is watching this, is like, you already have the one you have. So like, if you're writing a movie or editing a movie, like press save, that's there. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like you can go back to that way. Like it costs you nothing to try things and like, it'll feel maybe awful. And sometimes it does. It feels almost like painful to do it. Um, but it's worth it. And it's worth even the humiliation of showing it in front of people to see if it works, even at, yeah even though you're not sure because you know you you're like well I gotta try it and whenever we have those sorts of ideas where we're like the movie's playing great everyone loves it let's try a bunch of crazy stuff and one out of 10 of those will be great and actually bring the movie closer to that 99.9 percent .9 amazing like and so you have to do those things and the other nine are painful and you put them away Maybe there's like a little piece of one of them that's useful in some way, but you just have to do that stuff. And I know we both are like that. Like, I'll be like, I'm just going to work on a bunch of weird ideas if you want to just go and think of other things yourself. And like, we both like come up with weird ideas. Do you guys ever think about dying? I'm just dying to dance. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I think that's rare too, to just have so much trust to just be like, I'm going to do the craziest thing you've ever thought of. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I just also want to say out loud, like we, we stopped shooting the movie on July 21st, 2022. And we knew this movie was being released on July 21st, 2023. And a year to finish a movie of this size is that's 
really hard. So, th so my experience of editing this movie, I think more than any other movie I've done was like the intensity of the editing process was about as intense as being on set. I think I wrapped on a Friday. We, I was in on a Monday. We were just, we hit the ground running and never stopped. No, go, we kept go. being like, are we ever going to like let up? And we never did. And we we had to, we just really had to. Yeah. We had, we took two weeks off for Christmas and I took a couple of days off when I had a job. When you had a child. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I remember the two weeks off. Honestly, I remember the two weeks off we had for Christmas because we released the teaser and it was well received and it made me feel like something deep inside me relaxed a little bit because I'm like, well, this is kind of the tone of the movie. So mm -hmm. if people seem to be liking it, that's got it. That's a good sign. Like, you know, yeah, because we were, I, it was basically just showing the beginning of the movie. Yeah. So it was like, <laughs> okay, well, you know, it's a short thing, but it was like, and so that, I think there was like some way in which we were like, okay, now we can go have our holidays. Mm -hmm. And then, and then January was hard. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, um, well, this is uh, really wonderful to talk about it. I feel like it's about as hard to talk about editing as it is to talk about writing. Do you find yeah. that true? It's like dancing about architecture, as you say. Yes. As they say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, but um, it's nice to actually uh, talk about things like the little like show reels you did of each thing because it, it's like oh we should remember that that's there's, a good thing yeah there's so many things like that yeah we have there's so many things maybe we should yourself. write them all down like this yeah. was a good thing we did on this one I'm but the next one will have its own problems and we won't know what they are yet <laughs> yeah and that brings me can i ask this last question i don't know if we have time but ask i like i like this one um goals as an artist going forward what are your goals as an artist going forward greta um make a lot of movies i mean that's not a very i mean make a lot of movies of you know different sizes different kinds of stories like i i feel like just keep going at bat you know i guess that's that's uh, that is that a good goal i don't know definitely and remember what are all your what are your you goals as an artist hey, yeah i i just want to keep making stuff that i believe in and feel is important to me you know like it it's it, if if you don't have something that like really resonates deep inside of you that's what i want to work on is things that do that and i've been really lucky to always be able to do that so i just want to continue that yeah i'll see you i'll see you at the baseball <laughs> of movies <laughs> no this is a terrible metaphor uh, <laughs> well uh thank you so much for 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 talking uh this has thank been you. greta gerwig and nick Huey talking the process. <laughs>